Hello friends and welcome to Roar Church Texarkana. If you want more information about anything that we do, go to jojodawson.net. You can find our YouTube videos, our blogs, where to sow, how to partner with us, any of that information. We hope that you enjoy this message. Amen. How's everybody doing today? Good. I'm excited about this morning as I was just really praying about what the Lord wanted me to share on. What the Lord showed me was exactly nothing like I thought would be coming out on Easter. But the Lord showed me some good things. And so we're going to have a, a good service, uh, a powerful time. Like Jeff said, next weekend, Larry Johnson, he's a, a powerful guy with a real pastoral heart. And just I, the times that I've been around him, I really connected with him. So he's going to be here Saturday night and Sunday. And he's going to bring, like every time somebody comes in, they have a different type of gift mix, a different deposit. So be here Saturday night and Sunday if you can. It's going to be powerful. Amen. Let's pray and then let's get into the word. Lord, thank you for this day. God, I pray that you touch hearts and change lives. And God, change our mindset. Lord God, to, to think more like you, Christ. I just thank you, Lord, and I give you glory. Amen. All right, we're going to jump right into this. I just kind of title this Resurrected Life. You know, a lot of times what we do is we have Easter and we have a resurrection service. That's good, but a service is an hour and a half to two hours, and, and that's it. No, 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 I'm talking about a resurrected life. I mean, you need to understand a resurrected life. And so when I started studying this out, I'm just going to tell you a little bit of the journey. I got ready, and the Lord said, I want you to read Matthew 26 through 28. I'm like, yeah, you yeah, like all of it? And he's like, all of it. You know, I don't like to read it like a lot. Like, like that was a word from the Lord, and he gave me a word from the Lord, his word. So I was reading, and man, I'll tell you what, it was just changing me when I was reading about Easter. Man, I'll be honest, I didn't see eggs or chocolate bunnies in there. I was just reading it, and do you know what these three scriptures are about? These, whole, these three chapters, Christ's suffering. It was about Christ's suffering and all that he went through and how he never stopped. So when I jumped into this and the Lord said, start Matthew 26 and read through 28. The very first title on 26, the plot to kill Jesus. Oh, Easter and resurrection is on the way. And so they had a plot to kill Jesus. And you know how it goes on to where they, they, they got Judas. They got somebody on the inner circle to betray him. Now, let's go back a little bit. Let's go all the way back to Genesis with Adam. I'm not talking about a Adam, a A-T-O-M, but I'm talking about Adam, A-D-A-M. I'm talking about Adam. Now, if you're from Texas, they sound the same, okay? Adam and Adam. But it started with Adam, and what happened with Adam and Eve in the garden, you know, whenever they had to leave, I'm sure it broke the heart of God. But what you must understand is even in the beginning, the Bible says that God was talking to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. He always had a plan, and always understand this, God always has a plan, okay? He always has a plan. And so what happened is in this plan, I'm sure sometime in heaven, God was looking down and Jesus and the Holy Spirit were looking down. And they're like, whoo, I mean, should we smite them or give them another chance or what? They're just kind of wicked. And, and Jesus is probably like, yeah, I'll go down. But, but I'm going to take what I've learned up here and I'm going to take it down there. And I'm going to go, and I'm going to teach them, and I'm going to manifest the kingdom. Now, a lot of times on an Easter service, all you hear about is the cross. And yes, we're going to talk about the cross, but I'm going to talk a little bit before the cross, during the time on the cross, and after the cross. And then even when Jesus left, how everything has changed for you and I. See, we're going to live a resurrected life. We're just not going to have a service. We're going to have a resurrected life. Amen. So here's the thing. Resurrection is to give new birth. To give new birth, something must die. When Jesus was on the cross, he gave of his life to give us new life. Amen. And, and these are some of the most powerful scriptures you will ever read about this. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Now, you, you read that and you hear about that, but think about it. Now, I like y'all. I do, but I wouldn't give my son for none of y'all. For all of y'all. I just wouldn't do it. Because God lo loves y'all a lot more than I do. Amen. But God so loved you that he gave his only son. That, that those who believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This is what 
it is about. Accepting the Lord and having this eternal life. But what, what you get must understand is people preach this on Easter about the eternal life. But, but what did Jesus do for 33 and a half years? What are you going to do? What are you going to do with your life? Amen. John eleven twenty five. 25. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live. Jesus is the only way to heaven. The absolute only way. Some people have crazy erroneous doctrines. He is the only way to heaven. Through him. Amen. John 14, 6. And Jesus answered them, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let me read it one more time. Jesus answered them and said, I am the way, he is the way, he is the truth, he is the truth, and he is the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. That is it. 1 Peter 1, 3. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in his great mercy. He has given us new birth into a new living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. We're going to have some fun in here today. Listen, Jesus came to earth to partner with the original plan that God had to restore the world. You got me? He came down, and when he came to earth, I just even loved when he was 12 years old. Now, in his day, you couldn't preach in the temple, tabernacle, synagogue, you were 30. But Jesus, you know, he was the rule breaker. He walked in, was preaching and teaching at 12 years of age. And at 12 years of age, they already caught the glimpse that there's something different about this one. Has anybody ever told you there's something different about you? There is. I'm telling you. And so Jesus partnered with God and came down to, to just not die on the cross for us, but to show us how to manifest the kingdom. Now, why is resurrection so important with Jesus? Now, Lazarus was dead and he was resurrected, but we don't celebrate that. You don't have any people that have a theology around Lazarus. No, no, no. Because when Jesus came, he was sent. He was sent from heaven to earth. He was a sent one. And when you are sent, you have a powerful anointing, and it draws people to that. Now, here's the thing. Why in the world would one of the most powerful empires that was ever existed, the Roman Empire, why were they so scared of Jesus? Why in the world was this huge army so scared of Jesus? I don't ever read when Jesus had any weapons or chariots or anything. He didn't have anything. But see, what happened is when Jesus came down and said, I'm going to manifest my father's kingdom. Oh, where's your father at? Are you from a land far away? And because his terminology, y'all ready for this? His terminology was always heavenly minded. He would speak earthly, and people that are earthly minded never understood the heavenly minded conversations. So he would say, oh, oh, my father. And he would point over there like, where's your father at? Oh, oh, my father has this and my father has that. They think that he sailed across the sea or something. That's why the whole Roman Empire was scared to death of Jesus and Paul the Apostle. Because there was a power upon them. Because when you get around somebody who has the power and the favor and the increase of God on their life, you will be able to see that there is a power in their life. Are y'all tracking with me today? So the Roman Empire, they were always trying to plot against him. Now the religious leaders and the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were always trying to come against him because of his persuasive speech. They're like, ooh, he can preach. He must have been to Toastmasters. He must have an education. He must have something. No, no. He is walking in the power and the authority. And they didn't understand that, that he had this much power, this much authority when he talked about the kingdom and because they were thinking earthly. I'm telling you, you've got so much power inside of you. You've got the kingdom inside of you. That's why people are coming against you. That's why people or always fighting you, because Jesus died on what we call, you know, like Good Friday, and then we have Resurrection Sunday, but I'm telling you, you have a resurrected life that, he, you know, and, and people, this is old cliche, but it's so good. Are you living the life worthy of what Jesus died for? I used to hear that my whole life. I said that. I am so tired of hearing that. One day I thought, well, it's true. Am I doing what the Lord died on the cross for? Man, let's go on. Do you know the root meaning of the word resurrection is the same thing as the root meeting for the word surprise. Surprise. So we're going to get into the resurrection here in a minute. But remember this in Ephesians 1, 19 and 20 says, My prayer for you is that every moment you will experience the measureless power of God made available to you through faith. Then our lives will be an advertisement of the immense power as it works through you. This is the explosive and mighty resurrection power that was released when God raised Christ from the dead. Hang on. 
what you got to understand is the power that God used to raise Christ from the dead is in you. And he's saying that resurrection power is in you. What are you doing with it? See, when God had the resurrection power, Jesus Christ was naturally dead. He rose him up again. But, but what's inside of you that God wants to reach down and raise up in you? You've got the resurrection life in you. You've got the power inside of you, okay? We're going to skip this part. Matthew, I love this. I just love reading through Matthew. I, I can't read. I want to read like eight chapters, but it's not going to work. So we started off with, with Matthew 26. God said, go to Matthew 26 and read through 28. It started off with a plot to kill Jesus. That's, that's bad. And then one of Jesus' main guys, Judas, they talked him into betraying him. That right there, you got to understand, that's got to hurt. People are always going to come against you, but one of your close ones, when they come against you, it hurts. Jesus had feelings, okay? He had feelings, and he hurt. And then all of a sudden, it goes on. Jesus predicted that Peter would deny him. He said, Peter, you're going to deny me. Oh, Jesus, I'll never deny three times. Peter, if he did anything, it was excess. You know, he'd preach Pentecost. He just didn't preach regular service. If he's going to deny him, he's going to do it three times. He just, that's just the type of person that he was. And then all of this was coming against Jesus. But here is the thing. Jesus knew death and resurrection was coming. Do you not think that in his mind he said, I am going to have to go through a whole lot to get to the cross. And, and there was some way that even man knew, that men knew that they had to stop Jesus from getting to that cross. There will be people that will come into your life that will try to keep you from the things. You know, the cross, is, it, it represents death. You know, every one of us has to have some kind of cross in our life that we're going to go to a place where we have to die. A lot of times it's to pride. It's always to the flesh. But there was a time that Jesus, when he went into the garden, he was in agony. And he walked in and he got his three, he got his three main guys, Peter, James, and John. He said, stay with me for one hour while I pray. And they kept falling asleep. They kept falling asleep. But, but Jesus went and said, you know, Father, if this cup, this, my destiny, if it has to be like this, it will. But is there another way? Because he did not want to go through at that point what he had to go through. But he said, I'll do it. And so as he, he, he progressed in this process, he knew what was coming. All of a sudden, the, the, he was betrayed and they came to get him at Gethsemane. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I've been running towards what God has me for and I get hurt over and over and over and over and over, time out, I need a day off. Just give me some time. Jesus didn't do that because he knew what was coming. He knew that something, I'm telling you, why am I preaching this today? Because some of you, you got your cute little face, your new stilettos and dress, or your new shirt on, but deep inside you're saying, I'm about to quit. I'm about to walk away from my dream. I'm tired. I'm frustrated. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm even coming. I don't even want to be here today. But I'm telling you, resurrection life is coming. It's coming. We're just halfway through 26. 26 is a long chapter. I like long ones. And then all of a sudden, this is what's good. Jesus faces the Sanhedrins, and they come, and they come like a mob. They come like, there he is. And they walk up to him. They're like, hey, we're going we're to arrest you. And uh, one, guy, one guy comes up, and Peter swings. Peter was wild. I love Peter. He's my favorite. But Peter, you know, people say he cut off his ear like, no, he didn't do that. He reared back and was swinging. He was swinging for the fence, y'all. He was swinging. The guy ducked, cut his, and Jesus said, hang on. I know what I got to go through. There's a cross waiting for me. I got to do this. And he's like, y'all ready for me? And, and it's like all of a sudden they walked into something greater. They had rage. They had anger. But then all of a sudden they walked into the anointing that Christ carried upon them. You know, you've got power inside of you. And there's times that people will come against you. How you react makes all the difference in the world. How you react towards people, your coworkers and family members. Some of y'all are going to be around some of your family today that you might not like. But you know what? How you react. Everybody's like, I hit a nerve on somebody. But, but how you react makes all the difference in the world. We're, we're going to stay in verse 26. We're going to just keep going. You know, but then Peter comes in and he denies Christ. And, and the thing is, Christ has been hurt over and over. Basically, everything the enemy could throw against him to stop, nothing could stop him. 
but because he was a sent one. God sent him, and he had that apostolic thrust to keep going. you got that same power in you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but some of you are about to just say, I'm, I'm done. And God says, no, you've just begun. You think you're done, but you, you've just begun. And then in, verse 20, in, in chapter 27, this, I love this. Jesus is handed over to Pilate. And as he walks up, this is one of my favorite parts of the Bible. Pilate is talking and everybody's mad and, and they're frustrated. And, and Pilate looks at Jesus and says this. Do you hear how many things have been testified against you? And Jesus said, not one word. How hard is it not to defend yourself? One of my, my top ten weaknesses I used to have is I'd defend myself at the drop of a hat about anything and everything. But all of a sudden, through the Holy Spirit and the help of my wife, I have learned to silencio. When somebody comes against you, you just... And it said, and this is what it said. I love this. And, and he answered him not one word. So it made Pilate, the governor, marvel greatly. And he just looked at him. It was like, how do you... Everybody's against you. Because he has a destiny. And he has a purpose. And when you have a purpose, your actions in your life will speak louder. See, when people talk about the cross of Christ, I look at it kind of like, like, like a platform because he was raised up where everybody could see what he was doing. And it's what he told his disciples. He said, I must, I must be given over to the hands of sinful men and, and I must die on a cross. But don't worry, I'm coming back. And he was raised up at, at that moment. And you got to understand that he knew what he was called to do. And when you're called to do something for the Lord, it's not always going to be easy. Every now and then there may be a little easy season, but not a lot. But it's fun. It is the most rewarding thing in the world is to go for the things of the Lord. And they would go on about how the soldiers were, were mocking Christ. And, and then the thing about, about Christ, they, they tried to beat him before they gave him his cross. And instead of taking him up to the cross, they made him carry his cross. And well, there's no way after getting beat he can carry a cross, right? That's what they thought. They gave him the cross. And he said, I'll, I'll gladly carry my cross. And then people would come in from the crowd as he was walking down the street to where they were going to put him up. Well, actually what you would call on the cross. They would push him over and hit him and beat him. And he kept making it up the cross. And when he got up there, everybody's mind was absolutely blown. Just like Pilate, he, he, he said he marveled greatly. How in the world could one man do this? And, and if you really study this out if you really I'm going to write a book on Matthew 26 through 28 I, I'm just yeah, I've been intrigued by this if you look at how every single thing happened through Jesus's life he, the, he went through physical infirmity he went through close people Peter denied him Judas betrayed him and, and then when he was at the cross do you know when you study about the cross his people they weren't right there I know you'll have my back, but I didn't mean like way back. You know, and they were like away from them. You got it. They gone. But, but you got to think about everything that could stop him. He kept going. So many times in life, the things that stop us, the devil knows how to stop us. This is the season of your life that you have got to keep going. I promise you, resurrection is coming. And, and then, you know, when, the, when Jesus died on the cross. I'm going to get this part in, but i got to say this right now. This is the, one of the greatest parts about the cross. When he was on the cross, he said, it is finished. They could not kill him. They cannot kill him, and they cannot kill you. The, I mean, in, in, when he went through everything that he went through, they could not kill him because the authority that God had given him, man could not take him out of his calling. Man could not take him out because he said, now it is finished. And the Bible says he gave up the ghost. But you know, he, he, it was hard. And there was one time he said, you know, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That he got to the place, but he stayed into the calling. Now, we're going to talk about the resurrection. I absolutely love the resurrection. So before I do that, I'm going to give you eight points. Eight points for your destiny. Are y'all ready for these? Number one, this is Jesus in the garden. He prayed until he hit his destiny moment. Number two, Jesus got a team around him. Number three, you will be betrayed by people very close to you. 
That one wasn't fun, was it? Number four, you will be publicly accused and humiliated. Number five, you will have no protection of high-ranking people. You know who came against him? Pilate came against him. The governors, the elders, the scribes, the chief, pri the chief priest was the main dude behind it all. The people that you think should support you. Why? Okay, y'all ready for this one? In life, if you depend on man, you'll never get to where you're supposed to go because God is the ultimate one that will get you there. You can have the greatest apostle, the greatest prophet, the greatest pastor, the greatest worship team, the greatest spouse, the greatest this, the greatest that. None of that will get you there. I'm talking it has to be God. So Jesus looked around in his region and said, you're the head guy. You're the head of the church. But you're the head of it all. And that's where he had to look. Number six, you will suffer in different ways. <laughs> and number seven, you will hit your final destination. And eight, you will rise again. So I don't care what you are going through. You're going to rise again. You got me? You're going to rise again. Now, let's talk about resurrection. Oh, my goodness, this is so fun. This is, now, we're going to go over to Luke because I love the story of resurrection in Luke. Now, on the first day of the week, That'd be Monday. Very early in the morning, the women took some spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They went to the tomb with their spices. Okay? Now, resurrection and surprise has the same root meaning. Okay? Miracles, real close if you were wondering. So, they went and they found that the stone was rolled away. Surprise. And then they walked in and then they did not find the body of Christ. Surprise number two. And then all of a sudden, there were two men. Suddenly, two men, clothed and gleaming like a light, stood beside them. Surprise number three. Wow. Angelic beings just right there. And then they said, why do you look for the, the living amongst the dead? And they were talking to them. That's surprise number four. Think about these ladies. They've experienced a lot in one morning. You know what I'm saying? And, and they was like, okay. This is wild. The, the tomb is rolled back. Jesus isn't here. Here's two angels. How y'all doing? They're talking to us. And this is what's funny. The angels looked at them and were like, do you not believe the words of Jesus? And even when, when Jesus is talking to his disciples, he said, I told you what I was going to do, that I was going to go, and then I was coming back. Why do you not believe me? Why do you not believe what the Lord has told you? You know, I've had some stuff I'm believing for physical healing for. I'm hurting. I'm believing. I'm believing for a building. I'm believing for you. I'm believing for every. I am believing because I believe the word of the Lord. You know what we like to say? What is the opposite of faith? And everybody would say fear. But the Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. What we see a lot of times is fear is true because I say that all the time. But also you got to understand sight. We, I don't see us in a building. I thought we were supposed to be in a building today. You know what? And all of a sudden the plan just got unplugged and it's not that we're not there. We're still here. I know people that believe for physical healing, and it's not there. But do we really believe by sight, or are we really going to be living by faith? Okay. So it goes on to say, why do you look for the living amongst the dead? He is not here, for he is risen. And so the ladies got excited, and then they saw the disciples. And then they told the disciples the very thing that Jesus told them he was going to do. And they're like, I don't believe y'all. Well, that's crazy talk. A man died. How's he going to come back to life? They said, that's what he said he was going to do. And they kind of, Peter said, get out of my way. I'm going in that tomb. And he ran in the tomb and he's looking around. And he's picking up the linen and the, he said, he's not here. This is, this is going to be good. Peter, I love Peter. And so all of a sudden, this is where it gets so good that everybody's talking about it. Now, if you ever see Bible stories or different parts of the Bible, you don't see it very long, like a long story. Luke 24 is long because this story goes into great detail, and I love it. So there were two men walking up from Emmaus. It's about seven miles to Jerusalem, and they were walking and talking about everything that happened. The Bible says, as they talked and discussed all of these things that had just happened, Jesus himself came up and started walking among them, but they didn't even recognize him. And Jesus, Jesus is fun, okay? And, and Jesus asked them, hey, what are y'all discussing together as you walk along? And they're just like, man. And it's funny, this one guy says, with his face down, 
He says, have you not heard what happened? Have you not heard, you know, everything that's going on? In verse 19, and Jesus says, what things? And I'm thinking, like, Jesus, this is hilarious. And Jesus is just walking with, like, what are y'all talking about? What things are going on? Oh, about, about Jesus. He walked in power and did signs, wonders, and miracles and all of these things. And they said he was in the tomb, but now he's risen. And there's angels, and these women are like, whoo. And it's like, and, and the disciples, they don't know what to do. And he's like, oh, okay, okay. And he's just talking with them. He's just walking and talking with them. What things? I just love it. And then, so Jesus walks up to where the disciples are at. This is verse 36. And while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood amongst them and said to them, Peace be with you. Now, if he was from East Texas, he would have been like, Hey guys, told you I was coming back. And he walks up and sits down with them. And they're just looking at him. Now, they followed Jesus and believed Jesus, but did they really believe the words of him? And Jesus said, well, the Bible says in 37, they were startled and frightened, thinking that they saw a ghost. And he said to them, why are you troubled, and why did doubt rise up in your minds? Look at my hands. He's like, look, look through there. Look at my hands. Look at my hands. Did I not tell you I was going to do this? And they were still startled like, yeah. How do we act when a miracle happens? Hey, in the kingdom, there really are no miracles. It's just normality of life. But when a miracle happens on earth, we're like, wow, God, you actually did what you said you were going to do. Changing our thinking. And so Jesus showed him his hands. And he said, look, guys, it's me. Touch me and see. And you know, I mean, this is how Matt would be. But he'd be like sticking his finger through his hand and like touching him like, this is real. And their minds are blown. And the whole thing, and, and, and there, there's a chatter going all about the city, about all this happening. Now, let me tell you something hilarious about all of this. Whenever Jesus was put in the tomb, and he was dead naturally, right? He was dead. The governor hired guards to come stand around him just in case he came back to life. Now, here's the funny thing. Here's the funny thing. If you read in Matthew, th there's so much I can't unpack at all right now. But, but in, in Matthew, it talks about it talks about how the chief priests and everybody said, you know, they called him the great deceiver the great deceiver the, the lying one is in the tomb but uh <clears throat> let's just go put some guards around you know the tomb you know, ju just in case just in case and then they would call him a deceiver but and then all of a sudden when he rose those same people that were like deceivers they went in and told the guards hey look we're gonna give you some money big money and you're gonna lie and then you're gonna tell Everybody that his disciples got him. And that's what they did. See, what happens is when great people come at you and talk about you, the words that they spoke about you, when you keep going after God, are going to come back as a lie. So, so the actual religious leaders of their region came out to be the biggest frauds and the biggest liars. And Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, was known as the deceiver. But then all of a sudden when everything happened, all the chatter got out, that they spent all their money and they did everything they could to stop Jesus. You can't stop Jesus and you can't stop your calling. You can't stop you. No man can stop you. No woman can stop you. I don't care what has came against you. Nothing can stop you. Amen. And this is the sad thing. These are the religious leaders of their time. And now this is another story that when I read it, I just laugh about what Jesus does. This is verse 40, Luke 24. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they did not believe him because of joy and amazement, he asked them, you have anything to eat? And they're like, yeah. And so they gave him a piece of fish. And then he took, yeah, hallelujah. We're having fish fry today. And he took the fish and he ate the fish. And Jesus, isn't that just, this is why I love my quiet time. Because Jesus is like, hey, what you eating? Hey, I mean, he doesn't ask for anything to eat, but he's like, come sit down. Like, hey, you got anything to eat? I'm hungry. You know, I've been preaching a three-day revival in hell. You know, and I come back with some keys. I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm hungry. And so he comes in, and he starts talking to them. And all of a sudden, it's just like, they're just like, Jesus, th this is you. And the reality of life happened to where everything he ever told us was the complete truth. When you understand the resurrection of your life in Christ, every unfulfilled promise you will know will 
come to pass. It's going to come to pass. And then, you know, Jesus came back in verse 46, Luke 24, and told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. This is what the word says. You've been following me for three years. I mean, what, what, what do you think I was talking about? This is what I was talking about. But see, the manifestation of the word just came out. Some of you are about to have the manifestation of the word. See, when you study the life of Jesus, this is what I get out of, out of Matthew 26, 27, 28. Extreme persecution in every area. Then you go to Luke 24. I, I see a glorious resurrection. Jesus coming back and just it just changed the atmosphere. When he came back to life, it changed everything. Everybody, all, all the ladies that, that were around coming to the tomb with the spices, they were just radically changed. The disciples were changed. The people in the cities were changed. The religious peoples were confused and they were scared because everything they taught was known to be false. I believe Texarkana is about to have a resurrection. And that they're going to see the true power of God. There are ministries and leaders and pastors in our city and in our region that they are gearing up for some powerful, powerful things. Some of you have got ministries you've never even started, but it's powerful and it's just sitting inside of you. And when it comes forth, it is going to be amazing. So I'm going to give you a dream I had the other day. I had this dream that, that I was sitting in a field and it was a big field. And it was early in the morning. There was dew all over the ground. And then on the back side, there was a tree line, and all of a sudden, the sun started coming up. It, it was orange, it was yellow, and it was red. And as it was coming up, I felt the Lord say so powerfully, it's a new day dawning. And I said, yes. And then he said, at the end of April. And I said, oh, well, it's still good at the end of April. And then I started thinking about this. We celebrate Resurrection Sunday, but Jesus celebrated Resurrection Life. Do you understand that, that Jesus resurrected mankind? Well, with the fall of Adam and Eve, when Jesus came, it just wasn't to die on the cross for our sins. It was to give us life. You know, Jesus didn't die as an infant to, to die like that for our sins. He, he came to give an example for 33 and a half years. It's just not about spending an eternity with him. It is about what we do while we are here and gathering as many people as we can to spend an eternity in heaven with us. Amen. I'm trying to not to get on something that if I do, I'm going to rabbit trail, but it'll be good. We'll preach that later. But something that you have to understand. Let me just give you a little bit. <laughs> People will come in from different churches, and that's great, and we'll want them and accept them. And we'll have to work with theology and different things and get them thinking kingdom. But what if we just go win a bunch of lost folks? I'm talking folks that don't know anything about I love it when a guy spends time. Now, God and that Jesus fellow, they're related, right? I'm like, yeah. And there's a third and two. His name's Holy Ghost. Oh, he's a ghost. This is neat. I'm like, yeah. And we're talking. But they don't know anything about it. What, whatever you taught them, they're going to grab a hold of. There's no religion in that. Eventually, God is, God is setting us up. I'm telling you, God is setting us up. We're going to receive a harvest of souls, and we're going to teach them and train them. See, the thing about it is the whole thing about Christ and, and the cross and the burial and the resurrection was to teach us limitless, limitless life. We are going to spend an eternity with the Lord, and we are going to come down and do exactly what Jesus did and take a lot of people with us. This is what it's about. So with this new day dawning dream that I had, the Lord said, I want you to seek me in the month of April in a higher degree. So the Lord told me what I was supposed to fast, and I'm going to fast it. And, you know, I was asking the Lord, when he asked me to fast one particular thing, I said, you know, give me something like air. But not that, you know, I was just kidding. Not really. But, but the Lord said, fast this. And the Lord said, I'm going to give you divine wisdom and strategies that you've never had in life. And I'm going to give you prophetic words. And, and before April 1st even hit, I was already getting this, this greater dimension of, of just revelatory knowledge and God just dropping wisdom. And I said, I guess there's so much that's already overflowing on the front end. And so I challenge you. 
Ask the Lord, what do I need to do in April to receive everything? Now, let's kick it back to October, November. The Lord had me prophesy then that the first four months of the year were going to be a time that he was going to really pull people into himself the last month being the strongest and it wasn't for the rest of the year I feel it was for years it was going to be something that was going to sustain you and what I feel God wants to speak to a lot of people in the month of April is going to be something that you're going to put your hands to for years it's going to be ideas it's going to be wisdoms it's going to be different things that you're going to step in some things you're going to step away from God's going to add some and he's going to take away so April a new day is dawning so get yourself ready in this month and be aggressive about your fast ask the Lord what do you mean to fast and and like if you don't like something like like if you don't go to the gym he's, he's not gonna be like uh don't go to the gym you know he's gonna give you something that's gonna pull you away to him he's gonna give you something you know one of the, the greatest things you know he'll have you give up are things that, that feed your flesh and take of your time because he will he wants to draw you in because listen he wants you to have a resurrected life he wants you to step into something great. And this is what is so powerful. Now, resurrection, listen to this. Resurrection means that death has no power. And if we live a resurrected life, whatever you thought was dead, your, your bank account is not dead. It had been sleeping a minute, but it's not dead. <laughs> You, you, you might have lost a job, it's not dead, because the new's coming, the new is coming. And you know, you, you must understand that. You know, Jesus walked with his disciples, but when you read about the resurrection, when he came back, he came back full throttle. It was like when he came back, they were like, Jesus, is it you? And they were like marveling at him, but they'd just been with him for a long time. But now all of a sudden, there was something on his life that was even greater. You're about to have a resurrected life because there is no death in resurrection. It might look dead, but it's not. Now, I got to give you this because I love this part. Three times that Jesus gave people permission because Jesus is a bad man. In the garden, when they came to get him, he was, he was he's sweet and he's looking at him. But, but they wouldn't just come, you know, just jump on him. He had to say, you know, y'all come to get me? Because when, you, when he walked up to them, there was such a power on him. And I pray over our lives. We were at Glory of Zion, Passover and Beyond Conference. When Apostle Dutch Sheets spoke Friday night, I mean, I've heard him preach a few times. When he walked up, it was like, and the place went, there was a power on him. I'm telling you, there's coming a power. God is about to anoint you at a higher degree when you hit your level. You know, how was Jesus able to make it through everything he went through? Because there was an anointing from God the Father on the life of his son to carry out the mandate. You got the same thing on you. I, I, I know. I was praying over here. I was repenting to God. I said, God, I'm sorry if I dream small. I'm sorry if I'm not moving forward. I'm trying to move forward on everything, God. But if I'm not, show me what to do, and I will do it. I will go for it. Some of you just I even I even feel the Lord saying some resurrected dreams are coming back. He's resurrecting some dreams in here today. Now, remember, when you're under attack, you're also under the blood. So Jesus went to the cross for your salvation, and for your healings. And when I'm under physical attack, I'm always like, I may be under this attack right now, but I'm also under the blood. And the blood of Christ covers everything. So you've got to understand when, when, when your marriage, when your job, when your family, whatever it may be, it's under the blood. Always pray and put it under the blood. Amen. You, listen, your life shows if you believe in Jesus or not. It does. It does. You know, and, and I want to live a life full of life. Every day of my life, I want to live a resurrected life. And I'm doing okay at it, but I'm going to get better. You know, nothing is dead inside of resurrection. And if we are in Christ, we are in resurrection. You got me? If we are in him, we are in resurrection power. Now, if you're not really in him and you're kind of pulling off, you're not in resurrection power. Everything inside of you should be moving in that power. Amen? Because resurrection is life. And now, you know I had to throw this one in. Luke 4.43, Jesus was praying early in the morning. It said, now, when, when it was day, he departed and went to a solitary place, and, and the crowd sought after him and came to him, but he, you know, he had to leave. And you know what? He had to be about what God had called to him. This is what Jesus said. 
But Jesus said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities as well. Because this was the purpose that I have been sent. And he went on to preach in the synagogues of Galilee. When I read that, it's like there was always a demand from people on Jesus. But the thing was, Jesus said, hang on, I've got to go and preach the kingdom in other cities. This morning, it's not funny, but it kind of was. About three, I got up and I felt the Lord say, there's people all around you. And I got up and <laughs> I went through my house and I was looking through the window and there's people around you. People are, and I'm like, what is this, Lord? And I started praying and, and the Lord was just showing me, you know, no, no, there's people coming to pull at you. But what have I called you to in April? I'm pulling you to me. Don't let people pull you too much. Don't let people pull you too much. Now, here's the funny thing. I felt the Lord say in the month of April, reach out to, to the people of Roar Church and Roar Apostolic more than I ever have before. But the Lord said, make sure every time you meet with somebody, it is from me. Make, make sure you're just not doing this and doing this and doing that. But people are coming. I, I, I did another time. I got out of the bed and I was looking out the front door. I, I, was, I was looking at the glass. If somebody was there, I felt the Lord say, people are coming. People are coming towards you. And I was like, okay. And the Lord said, but listen, you keep focused on me in April because what is coming after April. And here's the thing. Every time God tells me that something's coming in this next season, it always happens. And then it always happens. And then it always happens. And then it always happens. And I'm just like, God, you're so faithful. And so this is the thing. So I want to ask you, what do you need resurrected in your life? First of all, let, let me ask you, is there anybody in here that has never accepted Jesus as your Savior? Or you want to make a, a really big rededication today? Is there anybody in here? I know most everybody in here, but I'm just going to ask. I mean, this is kind of like ground level foundation where we're going. Well, the Lord wanted me to share that because I felt the Lord say that every part of your life, hey, we don't do just Resurrection Sunday. We're going to do the lifestyle. And in April, it's going to be big because, you know, when, when, when Jesus, when, when he, I've said this, but he came back for all humanity. He came back and said, hey, we're going to do this all over again. And it was almost like, I call it like a rededication to God. He came back and said, we're doing it all over again. And I'm going to show you the model. And I'm going to raise up some disciples. And I'm going to send them out. I'm going to send them in all directions. And they're going to take over this world. And so God is wanting to resurrect something inside of you today that is going to bless the kingdom. Amen. So we're going to go into some worship. And I want to pray for every person here.